Mike Check 1-2 is the Y2K collector. Four years ago, when I decided to take my collecting journey to the next level, it felt like I couldn't lose. It felt like going into GameStop, I knew that I was gonna walk out with a banger, with a game that was gonna be a classic, with a retro grail or something of significant value. And when the pandemic was first going on, there was such a level of excitement around it that I can't, it was, it was really hard to explain. It felt like it was more than just the gaming community that was soaked into retro games. It felt like everyone was into retro games. Moms, dads, children. I remember going to game stores and seeing uh, folks who openly admitted that they hadn't cared about video games in 15 years, but being home and being stuck in the house made them remember, wait, wait, you know what, 15, 20 years ago, I did like Super Mario. And I would watch these ad adults, you know, a lot of it, would, it wouldn't even be kids, it wouldn't even be teenagers, it would be Generation X folks coming into retro game stores looking for a Nintendo, looking for a Super Nintendo so that they could get their game on. And for me personally, I had always been into video games and I had always enjoyed video games, but I decided at that time to kind of take my collection to the next level. And I definitely made some mistakes along the way. I definitely have some regrets, but throughout the journey, I, I learned, I grew, and I, I came to understand what, it, what exactly it was that I wanted to have in my collection. And so now four years later in 2024, with much of the video game hype having died down, and a lot of the peripheral collectors kind of leaving the market, we find ourselves in a place where things just aren't the same as they were even just four years ago. The, the gaming and especially the retro gaming market has become so fierce, so intense, um, that it's, it's difficult, you know, game hunting actually feels like hunting. Whereas before, it, yeah, we called it hunting, but it, it really didn't feel that way. At least not to me, someone who even, and as intense as, as I was at that time, I still felt like I was more of a casual hunter, a casual game collector. Um, and at, you know, at that point in the collecting journey, I think I was mainly looking for two things. One, I was ch definitely chasing the nostalgia of games that I played as a kid. Um, but then two, uh, I think I was also looking to experience those games that I had definitely heard about as a kid, but never, never got a chance to, whether it was because of financial constraints or just my parents didn't, you know, didn't like the game that I was into, whatever the reason was. And then there was that, that third element of curiosity, you know, of just about games that I had never heard before that I found myself saying, whoa, this existed and I wanted to try it out. So I, like many others, decided to go on a game collecting and hunting journey and build this collection. And once I finally got into it, it took off. GameStop became one of my best friends because I would constantly go in there and find classic games. Everything from Super Nintendo Grails to Game Boy Advance games. I would find NES games, Nintendo 64 games. And at that time, GameStop was just hot. Not only because they had great inventory, but they were even hot on the stock market. You had people betting, um, you know, you had people on one side shorting the stock. You had one side, on, people on the other side buying the stock. And I think at one point, Game stocks, game, game stops stock price, um, I think was touching over 400, uh, close to 500 bucks. Um, and it wasn't just, you know, GameStop. It was the retro stores and the thrift stores. I would walk into thrift stores and find amazing GameCube games for five bucks, for four bucks. I would run into classic DS games for two bucks and three bucks. I would pick up entire systems, entire bundles, video game bundles, including the console, two controllers for 30 bucks. It was just a great time. And if you remember that time, put a comment down, you know, let us know down in the comments if you were able to take uh, advantage of any deals. But the beauty of it was for me was that I didn't have to, you know, go to a bunch of yard sales. I didn't have to go to Facebook marketplace and you know, um, solicit and, and see who had things to sell. They were just readily available. It was, it was kind of like the calm before the storm. It was, it was kind of that period before I think people really started to kind of grasp the value in games. And I don't think there was as much of a monetary factor for it. 
I think that the folks who were already into video games were just going out there and just taking advantage of, you know, the games that they were able to find, the games that they were able to source, and they were just building their collections. And that was me, right? That was me. I was not hitting up yard sales. I was not, you know, doing the Facebook marketplace thing, but I definitely had my few stores that I would hit up on the weekends or whenever I had a spare moment. I would definitely try to hit up those stores and and just by doing those small things i was able to build and grow a strong collection of video games and you know the the, the sales and the deals just kept on coming i i kept on finding them and i kept on building them um but there was a point where i feel like it started to get out of hand um i just found myself buying games that i knew i wouldn't really play um, and I found myself buying certain things just because I knew that they were retro. I knew that they were old and I had that retro bug and I still do. I still do. Um, but I think things started to get really bad for me once I got into the switch because the switch is a console that you can truly lose yourself in just with the amount of games that are available on the switch. And I just went, I went guns blazing. And I quickly amassed a collection of over, I want to say, of easily over a thousand games. Um, there was a point at which I had close to a hundred consoles, including handhelds. And there was a point where I had gotten to, you know, close to 1500 video games. And I realized, you know, after a certain point, what am I doing? You know, they're, they're, I'm not going to be able to play all of these games. And I wasn't collecting necessarily for historical purposes. I wasn't trying to build a library, this massive library of games that I could showcase um, even on YouTube. For me, the, the main purpose and the main goal in building the collection was to build up a, a collection, a library of games that I, I would eventually play. Um, even if I couldn't complete each and every game, just being able to go a few rounds or spend a few hours with the game to really kind of learn the mechanics and learn the story and really get into it. That was the goal for me. But I just started getting out of hand and I started buying games that just were, quite frankly, in my opinion, shovelware. Um, you know, just started picking up titles that just really didn't make sense. And I would think that I think that that was the first mistake um, that I began making when it came to buying retro games and getting into the hobby of retro collecting and it was a mistake that um luckily i was able to find a solid solution for right so for me it got to a certain point i want to say maybe sometime around 2021 where i told myself okay you know what you're not going to be able to continue doing this you don't have the space for this and i personally didn't want to make space in my home to accommodate more games. So once I saw myself running out of room and I had to change game rooms and I had to switch my game room from downstairs and, and move it up into the attic and I started realizing that my attic was being overrun with just boxes and boxes of games, I told myself, okay, something has to change. You got to you know, do something different and you really kind of have to focus and, and, and narrow in. And that was that was the other mistake I realized that I made. I wasn't focused. I wasn't purposeful um, as, as much as I needed to be when it came to how I was building my collection. So what did I what did I do? I did what a lot of folks do. I started to sell. And the third mistake that I made was I started to sell as blindly as I was collecting. Um, which was another mistake that created a lot of regrets for me because in that process, I did wind up selling a lot of games that when I look back, I wish, I wish I never would have sold. Um, and I look back at some of the footage and at some of the, uh, some of the games that I had in my collection and I'm like, I never should have sold that. And I'm looking at it and I never should have sold that. And what I realized more than anything else is that I, I'd never really regret any of like the modern games that I've sold um, over the past few years. I don't regret selling really any of my Switch games or any of my Xbox games, but there are, you know, Sega Saturn games that I never should have sold. There are Sega CD games that I never should have sold, Super Nintendo games that I never should have gotten rid of. But I think I had just hit a point where I literally had boxes and boxes of games that I just said, you know what, I, I want to kind of get the, get rid of this and I kind of want to 
you know, just rid my home of some of this stuff and kind of just, you know, focus in. Now, the good thing is that um, I was able to eventually start to focus in and narrow in on what I what I actually wanted to have in my collection. And around t between 2022 and 2023, I realized, you know what? I want the old stuff. I think the retro games were really what I wanted to go after more than anything else, more than building a Switch collection, more than having a thousand Switch games. I really wanted to have unique niche um, retro games and consoles that represent an era that I grew up in and represent a time um, that I remember. And I kind of started looking at some of these systems and games as collector pieces, art pieces. And I'm not saying that you don't have Switch games that are collector pieces, but to me, I defined, I started to define what a collector piece meant to me. And to me, a collector piece was something that was aged, that was rare, that had limited quantity, um, and that you couldn't find very often. And so I started to sell a lot of my more modern stuff to build up my retro collection. And that really started with the Switch. Um, I started offloading a lot of Switch games. Like I said, I think at one point I had close to three to, or maybe even 400 Switch games. And I started to sell them off in bunches. And with each sale, um, I, I told myself that I was gonna do two things. Um, one thing was to get some cash back. Um, luckily, I was able to find a buyer that was offering 70% on uh, market value. And the good thing is that a lot of the Switch games that I was selling at the time, the bulk of them had gone up in value. The bulk of them had either went up 15, 20, you know, 25%. Some had doubled in value. Some had tripled in value. So even with me selling off a lot of that Switch collection, um, in large part, I kind of broke even because even though I was getting back 70%, I wasn't getting back 70% of the paid value. I was getting back 70% of the market value, which actually wound up kind of netting me a positive in some cases. And in some cases, I definitely took some losses. But what I did with that was I was able to take some of that cash back and put that cash back in my pocket. But then also I was able to flip some of that into some retro pickups and between 2022 and now, um, I was able to add some amazing collector pieces to my collection, which I, I'm, I'm totally happy about because some of these games were, were either very difficult to find online or in the wild, or they were just really expensive. And, you know, just to kind of name a few, you know, was super happy to pick up my Neo Geo AES and I picked up, you know, some really, you know, exclusive games for them. Um, I was able to add certain uh, Sega Saturn games to my collection, in <clears throat> including games like Burning Rangers. Um, I was able to add Hyper Duel to my collection. Um, I was able to add some some classic shoot 'em ups to my collection. And yeah, while I was sad about some of the games that I wound up selling when I was selling in bulk, I was able to add even some even some exclusive Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo games, including Metal Warriors. Uh, games like uh, uh, Elemental Master and, you know, just just the different classic cartridge based games that you don't see too often. And in this whole process over the last, you know, four years, it's been an up and down roller coaster of buying and selling games, um, adding and removing games from my collection. But I was able to kind of get rid of a lot of the fluff a lot of the, the you know the large number of games that i had and really scale it down to a smaller number but a much higher quality a much richer quality of games for me now some folks might look at my collection and say dude you're collecting this stuff that's ancient no one cares about it no one cares about retro games no one cares about nintendo or super nintendo but the important thing for me is that i care i have a collection that i thoroughly enjoy games that I play when I have the free time and games that I'm going to continue to enjoy moving forward. And more importantly, I was able to get back a lot of the cash that I wasted. I did waste a good amount of money uh, with some of the games that I picked up and it was good to be able to get some of that cash back. And <clears throat> for those who care about numbers, 
I mean, I was able to get back anywhere between ten and fifteen thousand dollars um, selling off a lot of that fluff, and that's not including the value that I got in some of the, you know, in some of the uh, games that I traded for. Many of you know the Neo Geo is a very expensive system, and just getting the console and three games, you know, was you know roughly around three to four grand just in getting that right. So, and that just kind of goes to show you, you know, some of the more expensive. Nintendo and Sega Genesis games that I picked up, um, you know, just five to six games um, totaled, you know, between three and four thousand dollars. You know, you have games like Burning Rangers, which go for, you know, six to seven hundred dollars. Hyper Duel, six to seven hundred dollars. Elemental Master, four hundred dollars. Metal Warriors, four hundred dollars. SWAT Cats. So you have these games that are just more expensive, but in a lot of cases, they're not expensive for no reason because you do have games that are just expensive, but they're not very fun. Like, you know, you know, uh, I think there's a bowling game on N64, which is twelve hundred bucks. But I I'm not going to play a bowling game. I, I don't care about bowling. Um, you have games like Clay Fighter Sculptor's Cut, which is a fun game, I'm sure. But it, it's probably ranked really low in, in the tier of fighting games. You know, there's a, probably a lot more fun fighting games out there than clay fighter sculptors cut but you have these games that are just expensive for the sake of being expensive and i wasn't really chasing that i was chasing classic games specifically in a lot of cases arcade style games which take me back to a time where i was in the arcade i was an arcade nerd every day after school i was in the arcade kicking someone's butt in marvel versus capcom and yes i was a beast and yes i did win tournaments back then so that's what it became for me and I got to say, you know, after all this time, you know, we're I'm I'm officially going into the fourth season of game hunting 2024. This is the fourth season that I've spent any amount of time kind of looking forward to picking up games, retro games. Um, and this is going to be a very interesting season for me. And I'll share with you why, because with the change in the economy and with the change of, uh, you know, Everything going up, inflation has been crazy over the last couple of years, and I don't have, I'm not in the same place I was four years ago, right? Um, things have changed, expenses have changed, and now I have to be more mindful and more frugal with how I collect video games. And so I'm gonna share with you my plan for um, adding games and building up my collection moving forward. I'm gonna talk about what I'm focusing on. So. First off, um, moving forward into 2024, I, I'm not really focusing on modern consoles, like Switch games and things like that. If I do happen to see a Switch game that I think is really cool, I, I may pick it up, but I'll probably defer to the eShop for some of those games because I wanna preserve the, the, the space in my home, the, the real estate that I have in the attic is, is, is um, low, right? So I really wanna just keep space on the shelves for, for retro games that I wanna add. And so I'm gonna be concentrating on a few systems going into this, uh, the rest of this year. And that's really gonna be the Super Nintendo, the Sega CD, the Sega Genesis, um, and the Neo Geo, right? So my goal for the rest of this year is to add nine more rare retro games to the collection. Now, these games do happen to be on the more expensive side, which is why I'm only gonna be picking up one game per month. So I'll take you through the games that I plan on adding um, throughout the rest of the year. So for the month of April, which starts tomorrow, because today is the last day of March, last day of the quarter. So and this challenge will officially begin in April. Um, for April, the, the game that I'm looking to add is going to be Super Turrican 2. So that's one that I'm going to be looking to add on the Super Nintendo. Loose card, of course, I'm not paying um, complete in box prices. Um, for any of these Super Nintendo games. So for April, it's gonna be Super Turrican 2. For May, I'm gonna be looking to add Pop Full Mail uh, on the Sega CD. Uh, in June, I'm gonna be looking to add co a complete in box copy of Troubleshooter for the Sega Genesis. July, I'll be looking to add a complete in box copy of Grind Stormer on the Genesis. August is gonna be a big one because I'm gonna be really be looking to add a copy of Space Megaforce. Um, that's an NES, uh, sorry, a Super Nintendo classic, a space shooter there. Uh, in September, I'm going to be looking to add a cart-only copy of Captain Commando. 
Uh, in October, I'm going to be looking to add a complete inbox copy of Hellfire for the Sega Genesis. November, going to be looking to add a copy of Dracula X, uh, Castlevania Dracula X to the uh, loose cart on the Super Nintendo. And then December is a bit of a wild card, but, but December, I'm going to be looking to add a copy of Blazing Star for the Neo Geo. I've been looking for a genuine, authentic copy of Blazing Star. I can't even find an authentic copy online anywhere. Um, I have been able to find like the MVS cartridges, like the ones that they would use in the actual arcade machines. Um, and I don't know if I'll have to default to that if I can't find like an, an authentic, you know, uh, copy for the AES. So I'm not sure how that will go. Um, but that is that's the, pretty much the lineup for the rest of the year. Those are the games that I'm going to be looking to add. Now, I do have some alternatives in the event that I can't find those games. I do have some backup games, um, and those will be Alicia Dragoon, Complete in Box for the Sega Genesis, uh, Musa, the classic Japanese uh, samurai game, I think, uh, for the SNES loose cart. Um, also thinking about picking up Casper on the SNES loose cart. Uh, Pirates of Dark Water uh, on the SNES is another one that I'm looking for. Mega Man 7 loose cart and then Truxton complete in box. Though those are like the alternatives to the lineup that I have for the rest of the year. So all of these games are are pretty pricey. They're pretty expensive. Um, but I'm focused, right? That's the name of the game for 2024. If I'm gonna continue collecting, gotta be focused. And so that's where a lot of my focus is gonna be. Um, and those are the games that I plan on adding to the collection. Now, I do have some side quests because I don't want to just feel limited to these really expensive games. So one of my side quests for the rest of the year is I'm thinking about collecting all the Spider-Man games that I have for, for the consoles that I have. So like the Game Boy Spider-Man games, DS Spider-Man games, and that includes everything from the Amazing Spider-Man to, you know, Spider-Man on the uh, uh, Maximum Carnage on the SNES, right? So like any Spider-Man related game, I'm thinking about um, adding that as a side quest also thinking about adding the x-men games so any x-men games that i don't currently have on my in my collection i'm thinking about adding those really the retro ones right so nothing really super new so if it's an x-men game like on the snes sega genesis I'll, I'll take that all the way up to probably the playstation 2 i'm um, looking to add that um uh, another thing that I'm another side quest that I have is I'm going to be looking for the Game Gear adapter for my analog pocket because I, I do want to start looking at some possibly some Game Gear games um, that I'm getting into. So that's a that's a side quest. Um, and then um, just potentially some random SNES beat em ups. So that'll include things like Peacekeepers, Rival Turf, the lower end and the cheaper end uh super nintendo beat-em-ups those i'm thinking about adding back to my collection specifically looking for batman returns on the super nintendo as well as x-men mutant apocalypse on the super nintendo those are two the first two that i have my eye on so those are some side quests that i have with the collection for 2024 just looking at um looking at those and then when it comes to where i'm going to be looking to pick these games up for 2024 I'm still going to peruse GameStop. I'm not going to give up on them until I guess they give up on themselves and they close down for good. Thrift stores, I'm going to be continue to frequent those. Pawn shops and mom and pop game stores, I will do that. Um, that's where I'm going to be looking to kind of source uh, games. Um, and I'm going to be going to these places to find games that I can flip because I don't think I'm really going to find any, any of the games on my wish list in the wild. It's highly unlikely that I find a game like Captain Commando in the wild. If I do, it's going to be ridiculously expensive. And so I know that for pretty much all the games on my wish list, I'm going to have to probably source them online. Um, so my game hunting out in the wild is really going to be more so me sourcing for product that I can flip. So I'm going to be looking for games that I can flip. That's how I'm going to be able to afford these, because like I said, the name of the game is being frugal and I'm not going to be spending any disposable income on building this collection. Just can't really. It's not that I can't afford it. I just don't want to do it. I don't think it's wise, especially with where the economy is going. So I, I really plan on building a fund for this. And um, for me, it's going to be flipping games. And I'm going to be finding these games at all the locations I just named. GameStop, thrift stores, pawn shops, mom and pop game stores. I don't plan on doing the yard sales. If I do, it has to be like a yard sale that I'm driving by and I just happen to see it and I stop there. I'm not going to be going online looking for yard sales. 
I'm not doing the Facebook marketplace thing. Just not, those aren't things that aren't options for me. So I'm gonna be using those locations to find games that I can flip. And uh, flipping will be one of my funding sources. Um, I'm not using any disposable income in terms of like any money that I make from my job. I'm not doing that, using that to buy games, but I will use YouTube revenue. Um, the channel is monetized, so I do get a few pennies here and there for the video game for video games for the videos rather that I make and so my two funding sources will be flipping and YouTube revenue. That's how I plan on trying to build this collection. The name of the game for 2024 is going to be focus. Got to be focused when building this collection. Got to be focused when putting it all together. But I think it can be done. I do think it can be done. Um, it's just going to take time. It's going to take a lot of time. And I'll leave you with this. You know, I have a, there's a YouTube uh, gamer that a gamer YouTuber that I, I follow Cody with a K. He's got great videos. He does an amazing job editing his videos. Um, and for a while, it looked like he was on a bit of a hiatus. Um, but he he said even in one of his videos, like, you know, um, bills are real. <laughs> you know, he made a joke about the IRS, but that stuff is real. And when you're in an adult and you've got bills and you've got expenses you don't you can't just go out game hunting all the time you have to live you have to pay for food you have to pay for shelter um health care all those things and he started a new game collection from scratch and i love the fact that he's actually showing you how to literally do it from scratch and he started by sourcing items for free um and flipping you know free items and you know flipping at you know a bunch of free stuff into about a hundred bucks and then he has to stretch that hundred bucks into 168 bucks. And then he, and in the video, when you watch these YouTube videos, it seems like these things are happening in minutes, but it's taking him weeks, weeks to build up a, a $160 game budget. It takes him weeks for that. Um, and that's where we're at, right? This is the climate that we're in. This is the financial climate that we're in. If you're wanting to do this without really, with genuinely without spending any of your own money, the name of the game is Time patience and consistency and that's why for me my main goal is to collect one grail per month and it's going to be tough because i know i'm going to run into a bunch of games throughout the rest of this year that i'm going to want to pick up but if we're going to be frugal if we're going to be cost conscious and if we're going to be responsible we got to have focus and so that does it that does it for me um what an amazing quarter I had some really good pickups to start the year off but the rest of 2024 is going to be about priorities but still being able to enjoy the hobby of game collecting and the joy of the hunt going out there and finding games to flip um, we already have some money in the budget from games that i sold i sold out a few games out of my personal collection to start my budget so, so i'm not as i'm not going to be as frugal as cody with a k um, but i do have st a starting off budget of roughly around two to 250 to kind of get things going so we're going to take it from there um, I'm going to need every penny because all those games on that wish list are really expensive. So there's not a penny to spare um, and we're going to make it pop and I'll, I'll bring you along for the ride and show you um, how it's working for me. Um, hopefully you stick around, hopefully you enjoy it and hopefully you enjoyed hearing about this journey um, over the last four years. Let me know how the last four years of game collecting have treated you. Have you made mistakes? Have you had some big wins? It's all a part of the story. It's the Y2K Collector. Hope you, hopefully you enjoy your holiday weekend, and I will see you in April. Take it easy.